Hey guys, we are live. It's uh, every Tuesday live at three, and we are live again this Tuesday. It's Tuesday, <laughs> talking about entrepreneurship, business, and financial concepts. And if you have any questions, send them through on the live session, and we will answer them live. This week we are at Artikoffie Buffelspoort. So as you can see in the background. Uh, there's some uh, swimming pools uh, this is the cold swimming pool that's why there's not a lot of people here um, the warm uh, swimming pools is is down that way and there's a lot of people there and music playing and everything so it's a great vibe here at Artikofia Buffelspoort and I'm here because tomorrow I'm talking to all of the grade 11s um, for the Artikofia Jeug Berat which is gonna be awesome. Last week we were at Klein Kariba for their article of your and it was awesome with all of the grade 11s had some amazing feedback and they loved the talk and everything we talked about. You know, establishing a wealth mindset, um, helping them to think differently about money and trying to change the way South Africans look about money and um, in order to change our future. So that's what we're all doing here, that's what we're all about. And uh, this week we're at Article Fear Buffel Spurt. So it's awesome. Um, guys, uh, so today we're going to talk a bit about all of the little businesses I've had and what I learned from it and how you can use experience um, to, to create a recipe to really enable you to become successful. A recipe in your business in your entrepreneurial journey uh, in your side hustle to enable you to become more successful Natasha and Enku thank you so much for joining in um, and we are going to talk a little bit about that today so um, in preparation for my speech tomorrow um, with the grade 11s um, I looked a bit and I made notes of all of the little businesses I've had and there were so many starting from school and if I look back, like the first little business I had was uh, these little Scooby-Doo's. It was like these plastic strings that you can weave to make like keychains. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, it was like a craze at school and everybody wanted one. So I told my mother, Mom, can we go to Makro quick and just like get a few? So we went to Makro, I bought them in bulk and then I got back to the school and sold them at a markup. So that was basically one of my first businesses. The other one that I talked about on, on bait soccer and stuff was me and my little brother when we went down the street to all of our neighbors and told them, hey, can we paint the numbers on your street curb? And we would paint the numbers on the street curb and make a little bit of money from that. And then the little Scooby-Doo's, you know, expanded into a full force toy shop in primary school. So outside primary school, every day when my uh, friends went home and came out of the school, I would be outside the gate with my brother and my mom and we would be selling toys. It was all of these Chinese toys like slime balls, um, uh, slime balls, clap guns, you know, all of that type of things. Uh, so it was awesome, you know, doing, doing all of it. Um, yeah, so, so it was the school, the, the toys and everything. And... Um, I think what you learn from that, what you learn from those small little businesses is just the basic skills, the basic sales skills in terms of, you know, how to sell a product, uh, how to buy and sell, how to, you know, manage your stock and all of those things. And a lot of times uh, when I talk to people in terms of consulting, I tell them, start a small business. You know, if you want to start on your entrepreneurial journey, if you want to become an entrepreneur and become financially independent and self-sufficient, start a small business. And then they always feel like, you know, I need to start something big. I need to, you know, start with a big app or a big business, get an office, get staff, get everything. But it doesn't have to start there. It doesn't have to start with this big business and a lot of overheads and everything. Take something small. Like, let's say you're, you know, going to family every weekend and, you know, they love cupcakes. You just start baking cupcakes on a Friday and taking them with on the weekend. Or if you're at the office and you know you're the only one that's packing in lunch or sandwiches every day and people love and they're so envious of your sandwiches, then just 
make some more sandwiches and take it to work you know and sell it at a markup or something it can be something small and you learn from that you learn from those little small businesses natasha Henku kubis thank you for joining in on the live session today um, we are here at article via buffels Poort. Um, to talk at the grade 11 article of your year tomorrow so it's a lot of fun working with um, the high school kids and motivating them so that was primary school right um, all of the little small businesses there then came high school in high school I did a lot of things um, I used to sell speeches uh, at the at the exit of the class at the, when the kids came out of class so whenever a teacher said hey Tomorrow of morgen moet jullie mondeling doen. You know, tomorrow we're gonna have a talk or a speech. Then all of the kids were like, "Oh, I don't want to do that." And then I was like, "Yay!" Because <laughs> I'm selling speeches. So I was standing outside the door as the kids came out of the Afrikaans or English class, and I was like, "I'll write your speech. Uh, Thirty bucks a pop, and then I'll write your speech for you." And I started selling speeches. Um, I also started music school, so I played guitar myself. And I started teaching, teaching some of my friends and other kids at a fee. And then some of those kids started, you know, becoming real skillful in playing guitar. So I hired them to then teach other kids again. And as, as, before I knew it, my um, guitar school, music school were very big and it expanded. And I had a lot of, um, you know, guys that I taught guitar lessons and, and people working for me teaching other people. Um, then I started selling phones, PSPs, any you know electronic equipment thing that you can think of. I don't know if you guys remember PS PSPs. It was like a mini, you know, PlayStation and stuff that I sold. Phones, everything. Um, so just selling all of these things, buying and selling, making some money. And then in grade 11, I, I realized that all of the matrics wanted matric farewell cars, and my grandfather always complained that the vintage car wasn't being driven and I said well grandpa I'll drive your car for about a week or two and I took my grandpa's car and I rented it out to matric farewells and from there we started building a matric farewell business where eventually we have like 25 to 28 matric farewells that we do a year so it, it just blew up and got bigger and bigger so that was a bit of my businesses in high school. So Henku, Kubes, Natasha, Philip, Jonathan, thanks for joining <laughs> in guys. Um, here on the live se session, Tian. Today we are talking a bit about some of the businesses I had in primary school, in high school and in varsity. And what I took from that and what you can take from that to actually improve your entrepreneurial journey and um, side hustle or business. So that was high school guys and then came university. At Varsity, uh, my, my businesses got bigger, I still had my music school, I still um, had the matric farewell cars that I rented out and then I started um, selling books. So I figured out that all of the first year students want the new books and all of the second year students wanted to sell their old books. So I made sure that I got the correct network with both of them, first year and second years, and I would literally stay at the same place. And just when the, the first year came up, I took the money, took my cut, paid the second year for the book, took the book and gave it to the first year on the spot. Um, I made money like that. Guys, if you're liking the stories today about some of my businesses, send a shop on the live session, then I know I'm on the right path. So just send a shop if you're liking what you're hearing today. Uh, then I started a figurine molding company. So uh, one of my, you know, my brother played computer Dota gaming and he was quite good at it. I spent a lot of hours. So I wanted to, to buy him a Dota figurine, but I couldn't find it anywhere in stores. So I decided to mold them. So we got a guy, sculpted a figurine, you know, started molding it and um, then just made a lot of these figurines, went to comic book stores, sold them. It was actually a, you know, a biggest business uh, that we ran and sold it figurines. Um, then in Varsity, I also started my business Gazeroo, where we do social media branding and um, web development. 
So we started small in my room, me and two, me and one other guy. And then um, it was only the two of us. We were in my room. We built websites and designed stuff oh, with the little that I knew about Photoshop. <laughs> and um, at that stage, we had you know a few clients. And that build business built up from 2015 when we started, end of 2015. Um, so it's basically two years now. We started with a thousand five hundred rand in uh, cash, and then um, turned that business into a business with an office and a lot of employees, and returning over eight hundred thousand rand a year now. So that little business grew up to a bigger business, and then Vasti also started buying property. So guys, that's a bit of my background as an entrepreneur from a small age in primary school, high school and varsity. And what I wanted to bring across today, um, I see a lot of shops on the live session. Uh, Jonathan is saying, yes, great, awesome. Thanks for joining in, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan is actually here at Autocafe as well. He's a facilitator with the grade 11. Yechbrod um, kids doing a great job, you know, motivating them to think different in life. Uh, Alas, Jakey, Danny, um, Tian, Jonathan, uh, Philip, Kuebes, Henku and Natasha. Thank you for joining in on the live session today. Marlu, thank you for joining in. We talked a bit about my businesses I had in primary school, high school and varsity. Guys, if you have any questions, send them through on the live session and I will answer them live. So what I wanted to take away from this is that you don't have to jump in and start a big business. You don't have to jump in with a lot of capital and hire a lot of staff and get offices on the 10th floor and start a business, okay? You can start small. You can start with a small business and turn it into a big business, but you have to get your recipe right. And this is where this live session's lesson comes, the recipe. So you can only get a recipe right if you've tested it a few times, like Tanta Kuba's recipe. That recipe is like a hundred years old and it's been tried and tested throughout the years and eventually it's perfect. Eventually that recipe is perfect and everybody loves Tonto Kuba's recipe and everybody sh keeps that recipe a secret because it's like the perfect recipe. And that's similar with business. You start a small business, even if it's selling Scooby-Doo's or cupcakes or, you know, speeches at school or whatever, you learn how the business works. You learn the industry. And that is how you fine tune your recipe. Because the first time you follow the recipe, you're not going to get the perfect cake. Okay, you're going to have to add some more sugar, some less flour, more milk to get a better cake at the end of your cooking session or baking session. And as you go through your journey, starting these small business, starting a lot of them, learning from them, you adapt your recipe in order to be able to take any small business and change it into a big business that turns a lot of money and creates a lot of capital for you. Uh, Zianda is asking, how do we schedule a coffee session with you? Albert, um, uh, Zianda, you just email us at Nicole at millionaire22.com and uh, Nicole schedules coffee sessions so I have them once a month uh, for the last two months I had to have them twice a month because there were so many people um, so just email us um, we'll comment the email address at the bottom of this uh, last session if we finished as well or direct message us on Instagram or Facebook and we will respond uh, with a coffee session I have coffee sessions where I sit the whole day with a lot of entrepreneurs, nine entrepreneurs or 10 entrepreneurs throughout the day. And we drink coffee and we talk about, you know, have one-on-one -on -one sessions back to back from nine to six or from eight to six. And we talk about their businesses and I share some ideas and thoughts that can help them on the way. So that's the one thing, Zianda coffee session, email us or direct message us and we will arrange. The other question I had earlier was, Albert, is the caps for sale? So uh, this is the millionaire cap i love flat caps so we designed some um, millionaire in the making flat caps and then we also have millionaire in the making cups and uh, the book and everything is all on my website so if you're interested in that getting one it's all on www.millionaire22.com cool guys so there's something happening on facebook 
Adele Marin, hi Albert, lees ons jou boek van Leonard aangekoop het, na jou kursus by HTSJV's, vir ander mense houding, teen oor geld en bezigheid. Dankie dat jy jou ervaring deel met die kids. Awesome, awesome. It's great having those uh, testimonies and feedback. Um, inspiring other people is what we live on and uh, what keeps us going. So thank you so much for the feedback. That's great. Okay, so today on the live session, we have Natasha, Henku, Kwebis, uh, Philip, Yonatan, Tian, Alas, Jakey, uh, Danny, uh, Marlu, Zianda. Guys, thank you so much for joining in on the live session today. If you have any questions, you can still send them through. I'm just going to recap a bit on what we talked about. So we went through my primary school, all of the little businesses I had in primary school. We went through all of the little businesses I had in high school and then in varsity. Uh, so you can actually check it out at the top. Oh, I forgot. In varsity, I also started a construction firm. So we had a small construction firm, firm and I built like walls and garage, you know, floors and, you know, fences and stuff we put up, uh, did a bit of that as well. So there's a lot of things that I went through as an entrepreneur. And the lesson that I want to bring across today is that you have to start somewhere and you don't have to start big. You don't have to start a massive thing. You can start small and you can start with what you know and what you have accessible to you. You can start with that and just go for it and just start learning. And as you learn through business, you'll be able to adapt your recipe, change your recipe, change your recipe until you have the perfect recipe, uh, the perfect recipe for business, which can actually take a small business to a big successful business. Guys, we had article Fear Buffels Poor this week talking at the grade 11 Yeg Barat. Uh, there was, this was an awesome live session. Thank you everyone for joining in. And we'll see you again next week, Tuesday at 3 on the live session every Tuesday. Have a great week, guys. Go Rockets.